Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 1, making the heat shield and mounting for the gas burner. And here are some of the parts I bought from Blackgate's engineering. These pieces of stainless steel are perfect for the job, but they've been cut using a guillotine, and this leaves sharp edges on them. The first thing to do is to remove the sharp edges on the belt sander. And this really is a health and safety warning, these edges can be very sharp, so always remove them before starting work. And here they are after the edges have been removed and you could not cut yourself on these at all, even if you tried. Although thinking about that, if I hit myself smartly in the face with one of the corners, that would probably cause some damage, but I'm not going to do that. I'm making a heat shield for a model steam engine boiler. And pain and suffering is generally not part of the job. So why am I making a heat shield? Well, have a look at this. This is from one steaming, and you can see the amount of heat that the sides have been subjected to. None of it got through to the paint, because I used a double layer of heat insulation, but by fitting this heat shield, it will be a real belt and braces approach, plus the burner will be properly supported. I once built a Stuart 504 boiler plant, which had an original 504 boiler spirit burner, but in no time at all, the baseboard that the spirit burner sat on became very badly burnt. So to prevent that happening again, I'm going to use a controllable gas burner, and to stop the gas burner from cremating the baseboard, I'm fitting a separate floor in the bottom of the boiler using one of the pieces of stainless steel. Then the other two pieces of stainless steel will be mounted vertically on this floor panel as an extra pair of heat shields and heat reflectors. I'm going to use some brass angle to mount the reflectors inside the boiler, but I'm also going to use some of this brass angle to make some feet so I can fasten the boiler down to the baseboard. As far as I'm aware, later models of the 504 series boiler had cast-in mounting feet, but I think this is an earlier model. Here are some other things that I bought when I went up to Blackgates. A piece of copper tubing for the water tank, a hand pump to pump the water into the boiler, and a live steam injector. These miniature live steam injectors are quite remarkable. This one will move half a pint or 11 ounces of water per minute from the water tank into the boiler just using steam from the boiler to do this. And the only moving part inside the injector is a ball valve. So this is a number two injector made by Don and David English at Jubilee Fittings. I think I'll do a special injector feature in a future video explaining how they work and showing them in action. But as this video is about the making of a heat shield and mounting for the gas burner, I think I'd better get on with it. The first thing to do is to make sure that the floor fits perfectly in the boiler. This clip shows me using a felt tip pen to mark out the position for the two pieces of brass angle that will support the upright panels. Before I get swamped by experts telling me I'm doing it wrong as usual, I would just like to say, these videos are designed for beginners. I always say that because they are designed for beginners. And as a beginner, it is very important to educate your eye. It is of course possible to achieve very accurate drilling of these parts, but it is so over the top for what this part's going to do, it's perfectly fine doing it this way. This is not always the case, sometimes it is very important to make sure the holes are 100% accurate, but in this case it's not necessary. This is a piece of brass that's been drilled, which is going to be riveted to the floor of a gas burner mounting in a model steam engine boiler. It is not a high precision part, it's not part of a satellite, and it's not part of an intercontinental ballistic missile guidance system. But please do not take this the wrong way. What I'm saying is you can't just drill the holes in any old place in the brass. They have to be accurately drilled, but not down to the last micron. As I said earlier, from a beginner's point of view, it is very important that you learn how to calibrate your eye. This takes considerable practice. I've been doing this for quite a lot of years, so I can make a felt tip pen mark and drill holes thereupon, and the parts are more than accurate enough, and here they are, and I've written on them. On the brass angle, I've written base R and base L, that's base right and base left, and on the stainless steel mounting plate, I've just written L and R for left and right. What I'm doing at the moment is just making a mark on the metal plate. And once I've made the mark, I drill it all the way through in the drilling machine and pop a rivet in there. Then I make a mark through the hole with the Minicraft drill at the other end as well. This ensures that the brass angle is perfectly parallel to the edge of the plate. 
Before I permanently fix this brass angle in place though, I have to drill some more holes in it. And I'm doing this freehand, remember what I said about the calibrated eye? I'm just putting a felt tip pen mark in between the holes on the other side of the angle. By using a couple of rivets to align the parts, I can then drill the holes all the way through the steel plate, using the brass angle as a guide. I riveted the brass angle using 8 rivets to the stainless steel plate, and now I'm using a needle file to mark the position of the uprights. Quite simple. I didn't show the riveting because recently I've done a couple of features on riveting, so you should already know how to rivet quite successfully if you've been watching my videos. The next step is to mark the two vertical plates with an L or an R, so I know which side they fit. You will notice the use of some spring clamps to temporarily hold them in place while I mark them out. My preferred instrument for marking out the side panels is a small round needle file. I don't use a scriber, I just use needle files. It's quite important to make sure that this side panel does not move whilst the marking out procedure is underway. And the same of course applies to the other side panel. The next part of the job is to find out where to put the gas burner on the base plate. When I measure the part of the boiler that is inside the main housing, it's about 9 inches long. So I'm going to fit the burner in this position. This is just about in the middle of the plate. By far the easiest and quickest way to mount the burner would be to simply drill two holes in the base plate, mark them through to the burner, drill two holes in the burner base, and then just use two self-tapping screws to fix the burner to the base plate. But in my opinion, mounting the burner that way would not be a good idea. I'm going to fit some guides that the main burner body will slide into. But before I do that, I'm going to take some time to thread the holes in the brass angle. This is a 4BA tap, and as you can see, it goes into the brass very easily. Not much chance of snapping the tap with this material, which is very soft. Not unless, of course, I drop the entire assembly on the floor with the tap in place, but I'm not going to do that. I get some really curious questions, you know, from viewers. I got one this morning. He was referring to the series about rebuilding the Stuart Models twin launch engine, and he said, Not having much luck trying to find part 22, can you post a direct link? Question mark, question mark. And I answered, well, no, because the series ended at part 21. I think that qualifies as being the oddest question of the week. Anyway, back to the job. So now I'm fitting the guide rails for the burner, and what I'm using are some 8BA bolts. In this clip you can clearly see me using one of my small Barco spanners to hold the brass nuts in place while I screw in the 8BA bolts. At this stage of the proceedings, some viewers may be asking, where is part 2 of this series? The answer to that is I haven't made it yet. And why am I using 8BA stainless steel bolts? Because I have lots of them. I bought a big pot full many years ago. The burner's a little bit tight, so what I have to do is just tap the rails with a hammer like this, very gently. I don't normally use a hammer on things, but I had to do this just to move the guides out a little bit to make the burner a tight fit between the guides. As I don't want the burner to move out of position, I'm putting an end stop in place. And all this is, is another piece of drilled angle. I'm marking out the positions for it. Then I just drill the holes in the base plate, countersink the holes in the base plate and screw in some more 8BA bolts. Once again using my incredibly useful small Barco spanner to grip the nuts on the other side. And now, if I slide the burner into position, it stays where it's put. Watch, even upside down. This clip shows me fitting one of the side plates to the brass angle, and as you can see, all of the 4BA bolts are screwing perfectly, and I didn't have to file any of the holes or move their position. So there really is a lot to be said for working on the calibrated eye. Get plenty of practice in, and very soon you'll be able to do this. Just use a felt tip pen mark, and follow through with a drill, and everything fits together. I would, however, like to take this opportunity to say that if you are a beginner to metalwork in general, you may find that it doesn't quite work out like this, and you may have to use a needle file to elongate the holes in the steel plate to make it fit the holes that you've drilled in the brass angle. I'd just like to issue a serious warning, this is not a joke. If you suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, then I really am sorry that I missed some bolts out on one side. Unfortunately, I ran out. And now I'm going to go up to Blackgates Engineering and buy some more. I really am sorry about this.
But thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.